A year ago, it was only a rumor that we would see ZBrush on a mobile device. But that's not the case anymore, because it is available as a real app in the App Store, and it seems much easier to use and learn than the desktop version. The catch is, the full version is available for ZBrush and Maxon only subscriptions, or as a standalone option. So ZBrush for iPad offers 200 of the top digital Sculptium brushes. And you can easily import thousands of custom brushes created by the ZBrush community. On the iPad, brushes are in folders and categories. And there is even a favorites folder and a recent folder in addition to folders that you can create yourself. The free plan is also available offering the fundamental sculpting experience with a set of 28 of the most used brushes and limited features for tools like Dynamesh, Sculptures Pro, ZSphere's and ZRemesher. Normally ZBrush relies heavily on desktop keyboard modifier keys and keyboard shortcuts but it integrates pretty smoothly with Apple's touch capabilities joined with an on-screen wheel assigned to Alt, Shift, Control and Space equivalents. So it is unlikely that you will encounter any problems with a lack of keys so to speak. And from what I can see, ZBrush for iPad fully leverages the Apple touch interface maximizing the potential of gestures and actions unique to the iPad device, but you have to try it for yourself to make sure. For example, double tapping with two fingers instantly undoes an action, while using three fingers redoes it, and sliding with two fingers adjusts the brush size seamlessly. Additionally, the stack dragging feature is available on Apple devices like iPads and iPhones, which further enhances the user experience to let's say import multiple brushes at once, making the workflow more intuitive and responsive for the most part. And if you are more familiar with using a pen, the app supports the Apple Pencil and the Apple Pencil Pro, which is probably much better for artistic work, but it is a little bit pricey. In addition, you can customize the Apple Pencil's double tap or the Pencil Pro squeeze function to perform actions such as framing a mesh or enabling polygroups. You can also take advantage of all the Apple Pencil or Apple Pencil Pro features in terms of drawing and sculpting. But if you are an old-fashioned ZBrush user willing to use the keyboard, Maxon got you covered as well by adding the Apple keyboard support with all ZBrush shortcuts. And they also seem more eager to make ZBrush easier for both professionals and beginners, and they took into consideration the challenges that ZBrush artists had to face in the desktop version regarding the interface. That's why the app can be considered created by artists for artists, so to speak. The interface itself can be considered highly customizable, and you can customize the quick menu to add your own custom menus that you can access from the quick menu itself or even customize your own artistic panel for ease of use and access to, for example, your favorite brushes and tools. ZBrush for iPad offers many of ZBrush course features, including the gizmos, which is incredible now when it's only the first version of the app starting with ZRemesher, which generates meshes with evenly distributed polygons while maintaining key surface details, making the retopology process efficient on both desktop and mobile. Similarly, Sculptures Pro allows you to focus on sculpting by dynamically adjusting geometry with each brush stroke, a feature that brings the same level of creative freedom across both platforms. On iPad, Dynamesh ensures fluidity by automatically retopologizing as you sculpt, just like on a desktop version, making it easier to stretch or add volume while retaining detail throughout the design. And for more intricate designs, Array Mesh is available, allowing the real-time duplication of geometry, which is perfect for organizing and creating interesting patterns and repetitive elements. The dynamic system is also present on the iPad and brings added realism by letting surfaces drape naturally over the other objects, ensuring consistent results when working with cloth or organic forms. And for complex structures, Live Boolean offers the same flexibility to combine, subtract, or intersect objects, enabling intricate designs while maintaining control over the workflow, whether it is on desktop or the iPad. And there's also Polypaint, which integrates painting directly onto the sculpting process without requiring a texture map. And the interesting thing is that these features bridge the gap between ZBrush's desktop and iPad versions and make it easier for those who are familiar with the desktop version to accommodate better with the application, or for the newbies who want to learn from zero. 
Quick Save is also available as an automated save feature, allowing you to adjust the time interval between each save. And naturally, you can also manually save your project at any time, which is obvious. And you can do that in a variety of formats, including ZBrush's native format or the more widely used ones like OBJ and USD, the latter of which is becoming a standard in the industry. The import and export options offer significant flexibility for professionals. For example, if you are in the middle of a project and you need to leave, you can save your project or file on the iPad, and later you can continue working on it, and then export it back to your original device, I mean on any other device you want. On a side note, you will probably find some tools to be missing like Zmodeler, which can be related to the fact that they want to keep it from the other packs or they are coming with feature updates. And I think this is not surprising, considering that this is the first release of the app. And that's what ZBrush for the iPad brings. More versatility, mobility, and freedom. Things that every artist like you wants, without being constrained by limitations of the desktop. Since the iPad is obviously more mobile and allows you to sculpt on the go from anywhere. And for beginners, ZBrush on the desktop can feel sometimes overwhelming because concepts like Z-Spheres or Dynamesh may be second to nature to you, but explaining them to someone who is new to digital sculpting can feel like speaking another language. So the app can introduce the features as simple as they can be. And for professionals, this is a plus because you can start projects whatever you want. For example, when traveling, if you want to generate ideas or sketch concepts that you can later on finish and polish on the desktop. When it comes to pricing, not many people are gonna be thrilled, but ZBrush for iPad is subscription-based. However, before you jump to conclusions, there is a free plan available, which includes, as I said, 28 brushes and 50 features from the desktop version, along with a limited version of the auto topology feature and the zero measure. The paid version, on the other hand, provides full access of over 210 brushes and 125 features, along with the ability to create custom brushes and UI in addition to other stuff. On a side note, ZBrush for iPad is already included in the Maxon One subscription, so you won't have to purchase anything. That is the case if you are already a subscriber. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new or you want to watch news like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.